Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Hosted by Retro Doll's hair supplier, this doll is part of a big swap amongst a pool of 15 other artists. It's a secret Santa kind of deal. I know who I'm making a doll for, but I don't know whose work I'll be receiving. Fun, right? My partner was Anastasia Custom, another YouTuber no less. She requested a steampunk-themed Lolita doll featuring a color palette of pink and brown. I came up with a couple fun sketches. I was feeling the coat on the middle design, so I took that one and drew up the color studies. Before going any farther though, I took a look through Anastasia's dolls to refresh my memory and familiarize myself with her aesthetic. It quickly became clear to me that obviously she loves steampunk and Lolita dolls, and has already made quite a few herself. So I thought, instead of giving her more of something she's already seen, let's give her something a bit different. So I chose the full-out hot pink dominated design. I would normally reserve such a strong color for accents, but I had a good feeling about this. It's gonna be fun. Let's make the clothes. This outfit has three main parts, a long sleeve shirt, the high-waisted tiered skirt, and a hooded coat. I found a couple of fabrics that work together nicely color-wise, including this thrifted hot pink tank top about for a dollar. Nice. I have yet to scan, organize, and offer my patterns up for sale, but the next best thing I can do is show them to you on screen now. First things first, seal the edges of all the frayable fabrics with something like fray check or glue. On this small of a scale, it only takes a small amount of handling for the pattern piece to be reduced to thread, so I recommend doing this. Next, turn your sewing machine on and set the stitch width to a small length. These are miniature clothes after all, so the smaller the stitches, the better. Of course, this is all possible to do by hand as well, if you prefer. To finish a seam, use a needle to draw out the thread so that they're both on the same side, and then tie them together in a knot. This provides a clean finish and ensures nothing will unravel. Press the seams with an iron to get the fabric to lay down nicely and look professional. Recently I've picked up some super thin pins, and I've gotta tell you guys, it makes working in miniature a lot easier. You know you're making tiny clothes when the thickness of a pin can offset your seam allowances. So if you can find some, I recommend tiny pins too. Make sure the whole time you're making the clothes, you keep a model doll close by to try them on. It really stinks to make a beautifully crafted miniature garment only to find that no one can wear it, so do plenty of fitting sessions. I used to use Velcro in the back to mimic store-bought clothes, but these days I found that snaps are both stronger and lay flatter. The skirt looks complicated, but it's pretty simple. I form the basic shape with a front and two back pieces. Then I gather three long strips of fabric, ruffle them up, and sew them tier by tier to the basic skirt shape. When the tiers are all attached, run the back seam together, leaving enough room for the doll's booty to fit through. For her overcoat, I'm using knit. This knit in particular really wanted to stretch. I actually made a complete prototype of this outfit first for Mini Catherine, and you can see how much the shape changed just from using a different kind of knit. Wild, huh? At least the bigger hood still looks cute. Anyway, the hood has a gap in the back for long hair to fit through if you're curious about that. To finish the coat's edge, I gather some ribbon and pin it around the edge, stitching it down with a beige embroidery thread. After I hand stitched all the way around, I removed the gathering thread for a cleaner finished look. Keep an eye out for teeny tiny things when you go to arts and craft stores or jewelry stores that sell charms. I managed to find a fair amount of steampunkish looking bits and bobs at Dongdaemun Shijang. I have yet to find tiny zippers though, so to fasten the front of the coat, I added some hidden hooks and eyes and two clasps on top. The bits and bobbles I bought earlier got me thinking about found object art, so I thought I'd try making her bag out of these bottle caps. Using an awl and a drill to make holes in both pieces, I fasten them together at the base with a strip of faux leather.
Feed a wire through the inside to form two metal loops on the top. Add a bead and an elastic loop so that the bag can close, and secure all those pieces from the inside with epoxy glue. Use a chain to form the strap, and add some of those cute charms we got earlier. Alright! With the outfit done, shall we make the doll? I'll be using this Claudine wolf from the stock box. It seems Claudine's always come with gorgeous hair, so I feel bad chopping it off, but it must be done. Cut the hair down to stubble, then dip the doll into boiling water for about 30 seconds. Once the vinyl head is nice and squishy, it should tug away from the body. Then you can get at the rest of that hair through the neck hole. Pulling it out is both really gross and oddly satisfying. Alright, time for our new hot pink hair! This is Pink Pop Monofiber from Retro Dolls US. I've never worked with monofiber before, so we'll see how it handles. There is no industry standard hank size from seller to seller, so if you're not sure how much you need, just ask them. I ordered six hanks for my doll to be sure. Paint the head the same color as you want the hair with a thin layer of acrylic. This way, if you see through the gaps, it will be less noticeable. I didn't plan on this character having ears, but you know what? They're cute. Let's keep them. Because these hanks are so long, I'm actually going to half them and use that. My rerouting tool is actually a hardware store drill chuck holding a needle in place, which has been cut at an angle with a pair of pliers. If one needle breaks, just screw in a new one. Easy, right? Okay, so peel back a couple of hairs from the hank, loop it onto the needle, and fill in the holes. This part always reminds me of knitting. Sure, it's a slow go, but it's therapeutic in a way. I start with the hairline and work my way up to the part. A couple movies later, and she's got a full head of hair! When you get to the part, fill it in extra thick. When you split the hair in half, you don't want to see any thin spots. To make sure I don't lose sight of the part while I work on her face, I'm going to tie each half off separately. Secure the hair in place on the inside of the head by squeezing Fabri-Tac glue in through the neck hole. Squish the head around to ensure the nozzle touches all of those loose plugs. Mask off her hair to prepare for the face. I use a cloth and short pins to secure the cloth right by the hairline. We're going to seal the face twice with Mr. Super Clear. This stuff is super dangerous to inhale, so make sure you're using a gas mask and spray in a ventilated area. To be honest, I'm not crazy about the stuff's toxicity, but I haven't found an alternate material that works half as well as MSC, so... After 30 minutes, we can start her face. To begin, add some chalk pastels to parts of the face. I blush her cheeks, add color to the lips and nose, and fill in some eyeshadow. You can also use your cotton gloves to help rub in the color while your cat assistant insists on helping. Next I fill in the eyebrows and sketch in the shapes of the eyes and the iris. This time I want her looking off to the side. With the line work in place, build colors and values from here on out. Whiten the eyes, fill in the iris color, darken the lash line, and so on. I'm adding pink to the tips of her eyebrows to create a gradient effect to a darker brown. You'll reach a point where the pencil starts slipping and you can't get any more opaque. That's when you want to seal the doll again and wait another 30 minutes. I seal my doll about 5 or 6 times during the whole drawing, including the initial layers. If you're curious about the cotton gloves, by the way, I wear them to prevent any natural oils on my hands from transferring to the doll. If you do touch the face and seal in those oils, your drawing may not hold up as well in the long haul. Before I switch to acrylic paint to do the finishing touches, I darken the lash line with black and fill in a pupil. I also added highlights with a cream pencil. Now with the paints, I can add some real saturation. Someone asked me once why I bother with the pencil underneath if I'm just going to paint on top. Eh, that's a good point. 
Mostly I just use the pencil to set up an easy to follow template. An underpainting, if you will. Next, I'm busting out the glitter. I saw this beautiful face up from my Instagram pal Color, where she used glitter in the eyes, and I was inspired to try something similar. So I'm painting on a little glue, then shaking on the glitter. Instead of painting on the eye shine with white paint this time, I'm going to glue on one of those star-shaped glitters. It looks pretty cool when you move her around. After a final spray of MSC, we can release her from the mask and reassemble the doll. Let's tame the hair poof by pouring hot boiling water over the doll's head. I'm always amazed that the face-up survives this part. <laughs> that looks better. With some hair styling and last minute touches, she is finally complete. Let's dress her up because I can't wait anymore. I wasn't that familiar with steampunk before I made this doll. To be honest, I wasn't that fond of the genre. But I must say, after some research and making a character, I've changed my mind and I really like steampunk stuff now. I've also never worked with hot pink before, so that was a new front too. So I'd say this doll was good for me. And of course, I hope Anastasia Customs likes her too. I must admit, I'm going to miss her, but I'll be getting a special doll for my secret partner soon too, after all. So it's time to say goodbye. Oh, I feel like we should name her first, though. I was thinking, Charlotte Copperchain. Like and subscribe for more fun toy customizing, and I'll catch you next time. Stay artsy! Annyeong!